Hello and welcome to Insta Blogs Global Reports. This is Sukmani with fresh updates and more citizen voices from all over the world. Stories for the day are Health authorities in India gear up to contain the spread of swine flu. Iraq reports first death due to H1N1 virus. The United States, Canadian and Mexican leaders meet to discuss ways to strengthen North American economy. Kenya ready with first foreign policy draft documents since independence. And journalists rally against lawyers' high-handedness in Lahore. Indian Union Health Minister Gulam Nabi Azad has said that swine flu is spreading on a vast scale and the country is gearing up to contain the spread. The infection has so far killed eight people and infected more than 850 people in the country. Asija Shweta Zinta from India says inadequate preparation to contain the virus is causing its spread. This is Shweta Zinta, citizen journalist reporting from India on Insta blogs. Finally, swine flu has begun to spread throughout the country. Fresh cases of virus are getting reported from various cities with eight deaths so far and more than 800 positive cases being treated in various hospitals. All this has once again confirmed the lackadaisical attitude of the authorities. Now when the virus has begun to spread and is expected to stay with the onset of winter, they are hurriedly trying to arrange the things. It took three months ever since the entire episode began for the government to install thermal scanners at international airports, rope in senior health officials and those at the bottom to assist in case of need, allow private labs to conduct swine flu tests and treat patients. To top it all, they overlooked the need to maintain sufficient stocks of anti flu virus tablets Tamiflu and Relenza at all major cities throughout the country. In India, one cannot afford to rely on the authorities even when one is dying. Prevention is the only cure in Hindustan. Meanwhile, Iraq's health ministry has confirmed the country's first death from swine flu as the deadly virus continues its spread across the region. A 21-year-old woman died from swine flu in the southern holy city of Najaf. There are 67 cases of swine flu confirmed in Iraq, including 39 cases amongst the American troops. Sijawad Abuzurek has more from neighboring Jordan. This is Wad Abuzurek, reporting for the Instablogs from Jordan. The recent death of an Iraqi woman due to swine flu have spread fears in Iraq regarding the outbreak of the virus among big gatherings of pilgrimages and worshippers. The flu was confirmed among 51 American soldiers, while 71 others remain in isolation after being suspected of having the flu due to their contact with their diagnosed fellows. In an email to the Associated Press, Eisenhower wrote that all forces entering Iraq are actually screened to make sure that they don't have the virus in order to limit infections. The last thing Iraqis need at the moment are Americans giving them swine flu, as they have caused them more than enough deaths which were not swine flu related. The leaders from US, Canada and Mexico have just concluded their brief summit at Guadalajara in Mexico, pledging more cooperation to fight the swine flu influenza virus and illegal drug cartels, along with ways to strengthen the North American economy. Our CJ from Mexico provides us with updates. The leaders of the United States, Canada and Mexico have concluded their brief summit by pledging more cooperation to fight the swine influenza, A H1N1 virus, and illegal drug cartels, as well as to strengthen the North American economy. President Obama, Mexican President Felipe Calderon, and Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper have left Guadalajara with a promise to work together to prepare for the next outbreak expected later this year. The three leaders also concentrated on boosting the regional economy which has suffered in the global recession. Mr. Obama promised aggressive and coordinated action to restore economic growth. The President and the Canadian Prime Minister reaffirmed their support for Mexican President Calderon's war against illegal drug cartels. Kenya will have its first foreign policy document since independence this week. The document, titled Draft Sessional Paper on Kenya's Foreign Policy Framework, puts the fight against terrorism, promotion of trade across the globe, environmental conservation and sports as priority links with the world. CJ Rose Wangui gives us brief insight into the document. This is Rose Wangui, a citizen journalist from Kenya, reporting on Mr. Brooks. Kenya 
we have its first foreign policy document since independence this week. The document titled Draft Sessional Paper on Kenya's Foreign Policy Framework puts the fight against terrorism, promotion of trade across the globe, environmental conversation and sports as priority links with the world. The government sees a problem such as climate change has posed a threat to prosperity, health and security in Kenya, thereby elevating environmental diplomacy into one of the foremost foreign policy priorities. The document identifies pillars of Kenyan foreign policy as economic diplomacy, peace diplomacy, environmental diplomacy, cultural and diaspora diplomacy. The most remarkable cultural diplomacy since independence has been the impact of Kenya athletes at the global sporting arena and the influence of the local music including the accompanying traditional flavors and dance styles. Following the call of Pakistan Federal Union of Journalists, the journalists took out a protest rally in Lahore against the high-handedness of lawyers towards media and indifferent attitude of their regulatory councils and associations. CJ Karim Khan states that the government of Punjab should take prompt action against lawyers responsible for rowdy behavior. This is CJ Karim Khan on Instablogs from Peshawar. Torture and persecution of journalists is not uncommon in the rest of parts of the country. But the repeated instances of harassment and manhandling by lawyers in the Lahore High Court is something that no journalist could have expected. There was an instance of open vandalism by a group of arrogant lawyers who not only stained the name of their sacred profession but went against the reason and logic that are the foundation of the judiciary. When a sue motor notice was issued by the Lahore High Court against the harassment of media men, the lawyers guilty of the offence created a fuss within the Lahore High Court and raised abusive slogans against the Chief Judicial Officer of the High Court. This kind of irrational behaviour on behalf of the educated community of lawyers is utterly condemnable. The journalist community of Pakistan hopes that the lawyers responsible for harassing journalists and violating the laws of the country within the bounds of the Lahore High Court will be brought to justice so as to discourage vandalism in future. If you want your voice to be heard by millions, let Instablogs be your choice. You can contact us at cj at instablogs.com. That's all for today. Show back with fresh updates and more citizen voices. Till then, it's goodbye from the entire team of Global Report.